Going into round 11, Magnus Carlsen was a point behind the leader, Wesley So. With just three rounds to go, he had to make his move. Today was a great opportunity. He had the white pieces against one of the weakest players in the tournament, Adiban Baskaran. Well, let's see what happened. Adiban promised us surprises, and he pulled another one today as he played the Scandinavian, a very rare guest at top level. Of course, a very popular opening at club level, but the reason you don't see it in elite tournaments very much is that these big guys don't like to give away the centre. So we have a very old variation on the board here. And, well, Magnus declined to play the, you could say, the main line with c4. This has a very, very good reputation for white. Uh, and then queen b3 exploits the fact that the bishop has already developed, hitting this, and there's moves like bishop c4 and knight c3, and this is simply better for white. So who knows what Adiban had in mind. Anyway, Magnus played more conservatively. He played bishop e2. Not a bad move. Um, there's, In fact, there's no need to kind of rush things in a way. White has the center. You can still play c4 here, but castles played by Magnus. e6. Once again, c4 is possible, but Magnus played c3. So just solidifying his center and there's nothing wrong with this for white and here well I quite like knight d2 and and then just bringing the knight c4 uh, if black can't get in e5 then it's very hard to challenge this pawn chain so white just is better because of that but Magnus kind of forced the issue with knight e5 and um, what he's going for is well Adiban took on e5 with a knight, but if, for example, bishop takes bishop, then white gets a typical space advantage. In fact, this position rather reminds me of the Alekin's defense. It's very, very similar to a lot of variations you get from that. Uh, for example, here, and white can use his space advantage. He can perhaps try to put a knight on e4. Uh, this pawn rather controls the knight on b6. White has a comfortable advantage. But instead of that, Adiban took on e5. Now, if pawn takes, I guess the bishop could come back, and that's that's quite a nice piece. But uh, Carlson took on h5 with the bishop, and now, well, he has a very pleasant advantage of space, but also he has the two bishops. Um, here, well, I quite like bishop f3. I also like simply c4 as well. Um, really nice position for white but instead Magnus with his next move was trying to squeeze as much from the position as possible he played queen b3 hitting the pawn on b7 rook b8 and this is a pawn sacrifice um, well white can play queen a4 check immediately and take this pawn but black certainly has very good compensation because it's going to take an age for the queen to get back to uh, normal life um, but Magnus played here c4 still with the same idea in mind actually knight came back to f6 so Adiban forces this pawn sacrifice uh, because now the d pawn is on prees so Magnus exchanged on g6 checked with the queen c6 and now queen a7 so that queen defends the d4 pawn so that's that's not possible well i don't know whether this um, taking this pawn on a7 is brave or foolish i mean it's typical of magnus that he strives to get the maximum out of a position um but black has excellent compensation here first of all his pawn structure is completely sound and i really like this double g pawn means that black's king is always very very safe when it if it castles <clears throat> but white's development is very poor and it's going to take some time to bring the queen back to to reality and develop um, in the meantime white's king is is well lacks defenders so let's see how adiban exploited this 
He played. He didn't cast immediately. He played bishop d6, and I really like this maneuver. So, what he's doing is preparing queen d6, threatening a big check, of course. So that gets blocked. But this provokes weaknesses around the white king. Now, you shouldn't take this pawn immediately, because, uh, excuse me, after rook takes h3, there's a problem here. Incredibly, the initiative just turns around after this, because, in fact, you can't really do much with a rook, and white's, black's king can't castles, and with d5, white opens the position. This is better for white. So Adiban, just to avoid bishop f4, he just brought the queen back a square to d7. Now h4 from Magnus, but you can see this is not quite as snug as it was a couple of moves before with the pawns uh, back, a, back a couple of rows. Um, the king is weak. You know, these squares around the king are weak. g3 has been weakened. Aliban castled. Now Magnus has to bring the queen back, so he played queen c5. And here I have a feeling that uh, the Indian player saw that he could make a draw here with b6. Now there are various variations, but let me show you this. If queen b4, then e5. Now black is ready to bring the queen to h3 after takes queen h3. This is a forced draw. Mate is threatened with a, with a check and check checkmate on f2, and now this is simply perpetual check. The king can't run into the middle because of rook checks, and and this is just a draw. I have a feeling he he saw something like that, but wanted to play for more. And b5 is a very good move. Black has an excellent initiative here. His pieces are very well placed. Very they work very well together. He has a very sound pawn structure. Why not play on? Magnus took, and a3. So you, but after that trade, you can see the pawn is isolated. It means that black can sometimes use the square in front of the pawn. Black's initiative rolls on. Rook c8, threatening a discovered attack. So the queen moves to the side. And now b4, nice move, because after this trade, you can see the rook comes into play. And now there are two weak pawns to hit. The queen came back covering the d-pawn. Not a beautiful square for the queen, treading on the toes of the bishop on c1. And now bishop b6, another excellent strengthening of black's position. The bishop comes to, a, to another beautiful diagonal, slicing down the board through the pawns towards the king. Watch out for that a little bit later. Carlson defended the pawn. Rook c4, good move, doubling the rooks. And now things start to kick off. e5. Now, maybe Magnus should have just taken this pawn. Um, and after exchanging, this looks terrifying. Suddenly there are threats here. But probably the game will end in a draw after rook c3 after these exchanges. But Magnus played on. Um, played bishop g5. But, well, here Adiban also wanted the most from the position. He could simply take the pawn on d4, but he played for more. He played knight g4, so nasty pressure on the king side. Magnus needs to exchange pieces here. And, well, again, if Adiban wants to draw, he can exchange and just capture on d4, but played for more. Fantastic. Rook e8. Rook stands very well on the e-file. You know, he he's perhaps thinking of pushing all the way. He perhaps can take here. Rook d1. He took on d4. So now there's a threat to play knight e5 and try to get in on these squares and drive the queen away, push the d-pawn. So that had to be covered. Bishop f4. So the knight is looking for new squares. Knight f6 threatening perhaps to bring the queen into h3 followed by knight g4 again knight c1 good move so that means if queen h3 then the queen can come back to push the black queen out but magnus having to be very careful here knight d5 
threatening the bishop. And here, Carlson should probably just play queen f3 to cover the bishop and then move the knight into d3. Probably good enough to hold the position. Should be about equal. Instead, he played bishop d2. And here, Adiban missed a fantastic shot. He could have played queen g4. Now, he saw this. Of course, it's a very obvious attacking move. The queen gets into the danger zone around the king. It hits the rook. He saw rook e1. And he was concentrating on knight e3. But actually, after this, this can't be taken because of g3 hangs. But after knight e3, in fact, white is still okay after queen e2 and then queen f3. And covers g2. There's a pin here. White is fine. So Aliban rejected queen g4, but in fact, after rook e1, he could have played not knight e3, but he could play rook e3. And this is absolutely crushing. First of all, let's see what happens if pawn takes. Black crashes in on g3. Check. If king h1. Then you take here, and I mean, this is absolutely horrific, and that's a very nice crossfire. Beautiful, the king is caught. What else we got? After queen g3, king f1, where we give a, give a check, and once again, the king is caught, and there is no decent defense here. That bishop. So cunningly placed to b6 a few moves ago by Aliban really wins the day here after bishop takes, knight takes, and it's uh, it's hopeless. The king is just too exposed. What else we got? Um, after rook e3, well, could be taken by the bishop, but this should be winning. Um, this might be white's best. But in this case, well, black has three pawns here. The king is exposed. Must be winning for black. So, very unlucky. He missed queen g4. Instead, Aliban played queen c6. But now Magnus got a grip on the position again. And, in fact, well, here, Aliban is still trying. But it's not good enough. And the game petered out to a draw. Um, I mean, there are various things that black could try, but really, by this stage, it, there's not a lot to play for. And lots of pawns were exchanged. Let me just take you through to the end of the game. But by this stage, they're going through the motions. They've reached the time control, and there's not a lot to be done. And here they agreed a draw. Well, a tremendous fight. Um, and again, we have to salute Adiban's courage, but also his boldness, for example, in his opening choice to the Scandinavian. Uh, frankly, not the best opening, but it was enough to um, shake things up and uh, he, he got a good position out of the opening. Well, today... All the games were drawn apart from Wei Yi, who defeated Kayakin. So Wei Yi is now just half a point behind Wesley So, and they play in the penultimate round. Wesley has white, Wei Yi black. Look out for that tomorrow.